Disturbing things from around the internet, volume 12. You know what I'm saying? Welcome back to Nexpo. Feels glad to be back, man. From Nexpo with love. Oh. I love you too, man. I love you too. Let's kiss. The internet can be a grim place. Surely you don't need someone like me to tell you that. Videos, live streams, works of art, posts, and pages about disturbing events that have happened in our reality are nothing but a Google search away. Underneath the no commentary long plays and the fast lane truck drag racing videos exists a vast ocean of eerie content that'll surely get you thinking. And just might. Keep you up at night. Welcome back to Disturbing Things. Oh my god, I'm already Your scared. one-stop shop for bite-sized eerie finds that I've recently discovered. I'm already life. scared. This is episode 12, so if this is your first exposure to this series, be sure to head over to the playlist down below for hours of further content to envelop yourself into. Without Absolute further ado, terror. it's time, once again, to dive into five more hand-picked and disturbing things from around the internet. Oh my gosh. I'm not emotionally prepared for what is about to, what is about to happen. Viewer distraction is ex strongly advised. Everywhere at the end of time. Let's set the mood. On the internet. There exists an album by the name of Everywhere at the End of Time. Everywhere at the End of Time. It was created in 2016 by a, a musical banger? artist named James Leyland Kirby, also known by a stage name, The Caretaker. Is it fire? While I'm aware that on this show, I primarily cover real world disturbing events, I wanted to discuss this piece of art since it perfectly encapsulates the disturbing reality of over 44 million people that are alive today. As you might have guessed by now, the album's an artistic expression of the numerous stages of dementia and how it slowly overtakes the mind, oh my sending gosh. it spiraling into a wormhole of forgetfulness, twisted by a reality that they stray further and further from recognizing. Dude, dementia is so sad, dude. The six-hour album itself starts off ordinary. It's cheery, calm, and invokes a sense of comfort. As the hours pass and it progresses, Leyland subtly morphs not only the overall tone, but each chord progression and tune into something that hardly resembles what you were listening to a mere half hour earlier. The descriptions from his YouTube video further exemplify the troubles that dementia patients face too. Stage one is described as the first signs of memory loss. It's a stage that's most like a beautiful daydream, the glory of oh, okay. old age and recollection, the last of the great days. Dude, that is sad. Stage two encapsulates denial. More efforts made to remember so memories can be more long form with a little more deterioration in quality. The overall personal mood is generally lower than the first stage and at a point before confusion starts setting in. So it's, it's, it's basically an album, it's instrumentals, right? There, there's no, there's no hot fiery bars, flaming hot Cheetos being spit. It's just, it's just like music and instrumentals, but it like, it changes throughout the album, right? It starts out happy and you're enjoying style, you're enjoying life and stuff. And then it shifts and it starts to get disordered and creepy and weird. And it doesn't sound anything like it did at the beginning. And it's supposed to sort of represent, you know what I'm saying? People's brain progression is suffering from dementia. You know what I mean? That's fuck. That's crazy, dude. I can't. Oh my God, bro. I don't know if I could, if I could like voluntarily sit down and listen to something like that especially knowing the backstory you know what i mean i feel like 
feel like you I would, I would spiral into madness dude that is that is fucking crazy stage three approaches the metaphorical inflection point it's described as the phase where some of the last coherent memories exist before confusion fully rolls in and the gray mists form and fade away dude finest moments have been remembered but the musical flow in places is more confused and tangled as we progress some singular memories become more disturbed isolated broken, broken and, distant. and distant these are the last embers of awareness before That's we enter crazy. the post-awareness stages that's crazy. At the two hour and eight minute mark, the album takes a stark tonal shift as it begins to exemplify the post-awareness stages. The spot where reality becomes a bleak, confusing mess and where little seems to make sense. It's described as the point where serenity and the ability to recall singular memories gives way to confusions and horror. It's the beginning of an eventual process where all memories begin to become more fluid through entanglements, repetition, and rupture. Dude. I couldn't imagine, bro. Like, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine just losing all of my memories. You know what I'm saying? Like, memories are one of the joys in life. You remember, you know, very, very happy memories from a very good time in your life. You remember very sad memories from a terrible time in your life. You know what I'm saying? But memories are sort of, sort of, you know, I feel like one of the bases of consciousness. You know what I'm saying? You, you remember something and it makes you a better person. You remember something and it makes you happy again or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So I couldn't just... I couldn't just imagine myself just losing all of my memories, you know what I'm saying? Like, I I could not imagine myself just not being able to recognize anybody in my family. Not knowing where I'm from, who I am, what I'm doing, where I'm at, why I'm here, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, that's just, that's just, that's crazy. It's, it's like mind-blowing. No pun intended. Stage 5. More extreme entanglements, repetition and rupture can give way to calmer moments. The unfamiliar may sound and feel familiar. Time is often spent only in the moment, leading to isolation. Oh my god, bro. And stage six. One without description. Dude, that's so fucking crazy. And it's just nothing. It's just, it's just nothing. That's so sad, dude. I lost my great-grandmother to dementia just a few years ago, mm. so this album really resonated with me. Rest in peace, As a dude. child, I remember her being full of life, always willing to go the extra mile to evoke a sense of union and love, whether it was through her cooking, her stories, or even her presence at family gatherings. Damn, bro. She was always someone that welcomed us with open arms when we go visit her. She lived alone. My great-grandfather had passed when I was very young, so unfortunately, memories of him are vague. But Rest I do peace, remember dude. him as being hardworking and an honest man. Yeah, bro. My mom... My mom works at a long-term care facility for seniors with Alzheimer's and dementia. So she works, she works around like dementia and Alzheimer's all day, every day, bro. And she's, she can even, she's even told me like how sad this shit is. Like seeing, you know what I'm saying? They, family members would go and visit, you know, their mom, visit their grandma. And they wouldn't even, they wouldn't have any idea who these people are. You know what I'm saying? They don't they don't recognize who their own husband is, who their own children are. And that's just that's that's so sad, dude. Over the years, I didn't fully understand it, but I slowly began to notice that something was off. One year we had gone to visit her, and she didn't quite remember myself or my siblings. It's a strange feeling when a family member addresses you with a respectful but off putting. And you are? Line that I'm sure most relatives of dementia patients are accustomed to. And then I realized what it was. Slowly, through subsequent visits, I began to notice things, like sticky notes 
explaining basic tasks like remembering to shut off light switches, to close the front door, to turn off the water, how to flush the toilet. The family photos were labeled and her once lively personality had slowly faded away. She was trying. She was trying so hard to be her. But this condition simply wouldn't let her. Bottom line, everywhere at the end of time is a disturbingly bleak looking glass into the human mind. While it isn't creepy footage or a disturbing phone call, this single piece of art is one of the most real, artistic expressions of a human condition that I've ever encountered. Life is fragile and beautiful and few things have stuck with mm -hmm. me more than this. If you have a story about a friend or relative that you'd like to share, feel free to leave it in a comment. While they might have forgotten due to circumstances out of their control, they surely won't be. Bro, see, and I was putting it into perspective of myself this whole time, you know what I'm saying? Like, I couldn't imagine myself losing memories, but like, I can't imagine how I would feel if somebody else in my family got it. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, let's say, you know, knock on wood, my mom, you know what I'm saying? What if, what if she got it in the, in the future? You know what I'm saying? She becomes old. She becomes, she gets dementia. She doesn't know who the hell I am, bro. I don't know how the fuck I would feel. I don't know how I would react. I don't know what I would say. I don't know what I would do. You know what I'm saying? Because that's just something, that's just something you can't really prepare for. You know what I'm saying? You just got to kind of deal with it when it happens. And it's just, it's sad. Damn, man. Tornado warning. Caught in the storm. Bro, is this somebody in a tornado? I swear, dude. These are fucking crazy. On the 22nd of May, 2011, a devastating EF5 rated tornado ripped through the city of Franklin, yep, Missouri. I fucking knew it. It lasted around 38 minutes and reached wind speeds of more or less 200 miles per hour. The aftermath photos are. Oh my grim. god, dude. And so too are the videos. Bro, that's fucking insane. For the past couple of years now, I've gotten a few recommendations about covering this upload. And to be honest, I never actually sat down and watched the entire thing all the way through. Life and such just got in the way, but I digress. Oh my The video is titled First Person Video of Joplin, Missouri Tornado, created by a user named IzLSG and uploaded on the very Why the hell does it have 994 dislikes? Who the fuck is disliking this video? This dude's so he's posting a video of him in his in what he believed to be his last moments. Dude's fear for his life, his life flash boy, his eyes, he thinks he's gonna die at the hands of this crazy tornado, and 994 people said, ha ha, fuck you, your video is shit. That's fucked up, dude. The day that this tragedy occurred. Their description claims that they took this footage inside of a fast trip gas station on East 20th Street. There's a gas station. Initially. Dude, that's even, that makes it even fucking scarier. Because I live in Colorado, right? And there was, I've only ever lived through like one major tornado, right? It, it chewed up the, it chewed up the mall, right? Um, you know what I'm saying? But it, it was nowhere near me. I didn't think anything of it. You know what I'm saying? But where I was, I was in a house, right? I was at my friend's house, and we were in his basement playing fucking Pokemon. So I was in a safe spot, you know what I mean? This dude's, like, just at a gas station, just out in the just out in the open, bro. He's not at home where he's comfortable, and he's safe, and he fe feels a little bit better. You know what I'm saying? He's obviously not safe in a tornado, but you're, you're, you're better off being in your own house than being, you know, in some random fucking, you know, gas station. So I feel like that makes it even crazier. the store before taking refuge inside of the storage fridge. While there aren't many visuals within the recording, the audio conveys everything you need to know about being caught in a storm of this magnitude. Have a listen. Oh my god. There's probably 18 or 19. Your chin is getting real. 
Yeah, they said there was one. They said there was one on the ground at Seventh and yeah. Range Line. Yeah, but they, that's the one coming mm -hmm. twenty of them. Yeah. Uh, no, they haven't yet. The sirens aren't going. But yeah, they did. What? Yeah, they Dude. did. That's as they, we were coming here. They this did. is getting they real. Someone in. We need it. So there's just hella videos. Oh my god, Thankfully, dude. Everyone in that store was okay that day. The wow. same, unfortunately, couldn't be said about the others that came face to face with it. In total, the storm took 158 lives wow. and left over 1,100 people that's, injured. That's that's sad, dude. Considering the fact that and the that's not you know what I'm saying 158 just... people died, 1,100 people injured, bro. That's not even counting people who walked away without a single scratch. But now their entire home has been leveled to the sea floor, bro. Like their houses are gone, their cars are five blocks down the street, smashed, bro. This is. This is this is sad, bro. Like natural disasters are terrible. Happened, Cause you can't do anything about it. Time to escape was minuscule. The incident in Joplin is haunting, and to date, it's cemented into history as the fourth deadliest tornado on record. Hopefully, ten years later, they've recovered successfully and never, ever have to endure something close to this magnitude ever again. Night at the coffee stand. He's a psycho. A man had killed himself by the name of Israel Keys. He was a serial killer, an arsonist, a bank robber. Oh my God. One of the worst types of people that exist. The reason for his suicide was because he was caught after a kidnapping and ransom attempt over 18 year old Samantha Koenig of Anchorage, Alaska. This is his ransom photo proving that she was alive. To which, in exchange, he had demanded $30,000. Except, in this photo, Samantha Koenig is back up. On the 1st of February, 2012, Koenig So that was...
So he took a picture saying she was alive, and, dude. And she wa oh my, oh my Conan god, bro. That, that dude's a group. sicko. She can be seen on this CCTV footage where everything seems fine. About two minutes into it, however, we can observe someone approach the window, to which she reacts with unease. Afterwards, we can see her hastily shut the lights off before carrying out his demands in the moment. After some back and forth, she opens the register and can be seen taking out cash to give to the man. Wait, is this the footage of the girl that he like took? He then demands that she kneels before he enters through the window. And a few minutes later, he proceeds to escort her out of the trailer. After this moment, she was never seen again. Oh my god, that's As fucking it crazy. Out, her final moments were grim. Later that night, and back at his home, it was reported that he sexually assaulted her, robbed her of everything she had, nice. killed her, and placed her corpse in a shed. Nice, dude, nice! Even more bizarrely, the day after, he took off to New Orleans where he went on a two-week cruise with his family. The entire time, she was left there and was never found. Two weeks later, and he comes back from his trip, her body still in place, and so Keyes dresses her up with makeup and sews her eyes open for a photo oh with a recent issue. Oh my gosh, I can't and show that! I can't show Lake, that! A few miles north of Anchorage. Israel Keyes was later caught. However, it wasn't what you'd expect. As it turned out, he'd taken off towards the mainland US, utilizing Koenig's bank card for cash withdrawals as if nothing happened. Because of this, Police were able to follow his trail and eventually tracked him down to a So he's path. dumb as fuck! So he's stupid as hell! Dude flees him from a crime and he's using her fucking credit card, bank card, that literally tracks when you fucking use you dumbass! Yeah, you dude stupid! Hatch Cafe in Lufkin, Texas. It was the morning of March 12th when Texas Ranger Stephen Rayburn would perform the arrest and afterwards, Keyes was promptly sent back to Alaska where he eventually confessed to not only this act, but numerous others. I gotta skip again. I gotta skip again. By December of that year, though. I'm not showing this. Leave I can't. I can't. There's bad things. To this day, police. Life. Oh my God! Did he write that in? I don't even. Oh my Sorry. God! Oh my God! Oh my God! He's a psycho. Samantha was just an ordinary person working her job, as we all do. She didn't sign up for this. She didn't provoke anyone and she sure as hell didn't deserve the fate that she was given. What she thought would be just another night at work had devolved into a surreal night of hell. A night of hell that led to an injustice. And, frustratingly, there's nothing that anyone can do to ever bring her back. Dude, I had to skip some of that because there's some things I cannot and I can and cannot show on Twitch, bro. Like when he, that picture, you I, she was not alive. The blood, I can't show blood. You can't do that. I had to skip, and I'm glad I skipped, bro. Dude's a psycho. My God. The incident on Highway 125. That's fucked. Yeah, dude, that's so fucked. I just told you to skip the whole story. Yeah, I wanted to know what happened, though. I wanted on to know August what happened, though. Of 2009, a California Highway Patrol officer named Mark Saylor was on a drive in a Lexus sedan with his wife, Cleofe, brother-in-law, Chris, and daughter, Mahala. They were heading northbound on California like State name, Route Chris. 125 towards Mission Gorge Road in Santee. While the circumstances outlined appeared to be ordinary, this is where they were, they were heading. I was with his wife Cleo, a patrol officer named. I wasn't paying attention. On August 28th of 2009, a California Highway Cal Patrol officer, of course, it's California. Of course, it is. Drive in a Lexus sedan with his wife Cleo, a brother-in-law Chris, and daughter Mahala. They were heading northbound on California State Route 125 towards Mission Gorge Road in Santee. While the circumstances outlined appeared to be ordinary, 
Little did they know that their vehicle would lead to this venture being their last. At around 7 p.m., a phone call was made to 911. It was from Chris, and he could be heard pleading for help since his car had malfunctioned. Have a listen. It's from the brother-in-law. Oh. 911 emergency, what are you reporting? Yeah, we're the, we're the I'm, I'm sorry, your cell phone's we're cutting out. We're going north 125. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry, stuck. I'm sorry? I'm sorry, they're stuck. Oh, shit. Okay, northbound 125, where are you passing? We are passing, uh, where are we passing? We're, uh, we're, uh, we're going 120, Mission Gorge. We're in, we're in trouble. We can't, well, there's no brakes. Okay. Oh okay, don't my! Have the to, so his like, fucking his, his 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 gas pedal got stuck, and they're just flying down the street, and they can't stop. Oh nah, dude. We're approaching the intersection. We're approaching the intersection. Okay. We're approaching the intersection. Hold on. Pray, pray. Okay. Oh shoot! Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Hello. Oh my fucking god! First tonight, we are hearing from the attorneys for both Bob Baker Lexus and the family of Officer Mark Sailor, who was killed along with his family in a fiery crash oh one year ago in Santee. Oh my Santee. god! Today, Toyota announced it had settled the lawsuit with the Sailor family, but 10 News has gone to... As a result of this, Everyone in that car lost their lives that night. Oh, dude. The worst part about it is that the car wasn't even theirs. It was a loaner given to them by a nearby Lexus dealership. So that's like, not even their own fucking car, bro. They, they drove that shit right off the fucking lot. Gas pedal gets stuck and now they're all dead. Bro, Lexus, what the fuck is that? What the fuck is that, dude? You gave a brand new car and it's, just, it's a death trap. Oh my God, bro! Oh, yeah, I'm no you. I'm suing for so much money. I am now the new sole owner of Lexus, dude. Stop playing with me. Are you kidding me? A loner car, and now they're all just dead, dude. Reported that the vehicle had reached a top speed of 120 miles per hour that is before so crashing into a Ford Explorer and jumping sad. off the embankment near the Mission Gorge Road intersection. The end of Highway 125. They hit another car. So is that person okay too, bro? That person is dead too, solely because this Cooney, these, these fucking Lexus people are stupid. Oh Witnesses my gosh! That the vehicle was thrown nearly 100 feet into the air before crashing into the ground and bursting into flames. After the incident, it was reported. Witnesses claimed that the vehicle was thrown nearly 100 feet into the air before crashing into the ground. That's some fast and furious shit, bro. It's fucking catapult. Dude, I can't. I can't, dude. This is, this is, this one's fucked. This one is so, so fucked because this should not have happened. This shouldn't have happened. It's not, it's not like that crazy murderer dude who's a fucking psychopath. You know what I'm saying? It's not like, it's not like it's a tornado. It's, this is, this, this should not have happened. That was just a nice family going on a night on a nice little drive. And they get catapulted a hundred feet into the air, smash into the ground and die because Lexus gave him a shit fucking car, dude. And bursting into flames. I can't, bro. I can't deal After with that. After the incident, it was reported that the Explorer driver had suffered minor injuries and was promptly treated at a nearby hospital. For the family, it was believed that the accelerator had become stuck due to an engineering oversight in Lexus models that included rubber floor mats. After a myriad of other incidents related to this, Lexus eventually rolled out numerous recalls. A myriad of other incidences! So you're telling me there was people just all across the country going 120, go 120 on a dash, and they can't stop because the fucking car is a piece of shit? Oh, dude, you got me fucked up. You, oh, there's, the there's no way, dude. 2009 to 2011, most of which being related to the accelerator pedal. The sheer amount of issues and affected vehicles are staggering, too. On your screen is a list of the recalls they'd sent out. And as you can see, a ton of them are related. Oh, my God. The Toyota Camry. 
Since when has a Toyota Camry ever been a problem? A Toyota Sienna for possible corrosion of spare tire carrier cable. So the spare tire on the back of the car was just falling off mid-fucking drive, dude. Nice. Nice. The stability control system. Bro, this is all like steering. Look, potential brake tubes, brake glitches, accelerators. Like this is this is literally the stuff that causes your death. How come there's never any minor issues with these fucking cars, bro? Like it's 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 never like you know okay the thing is a little bit rusty they just gotta change and get a new part. No, it's literally like it's literally like the 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 worst problem you could possibly have these cars fucking had, dude. To the brakes or the accelerator pedal. By the end of it, over 5.2 million vehicles were affected, and in hindsight, it's safe to say that anyone driving a Lexus model from 2009 to 2011 Dude. were rightfully on edge. The families of the victims eventually filed numerous lawsuits against Toyota, Absolutely. and as a result, they eventually came to a $10 million settlement. The hell no! Hell no! Four members of my family die because you wanted to be a dumbass? Hell no! Oh, nah, you are paying for my retirement, my children's retirement, my grandkids' retirement. Ten mil ain't shit. No. No matter how you slice it, though. You giving me no 50 minimum. Someone back Stop playing with me. Failure that they had no control over. Dude, that is sad as fuck, bro. They didn't deserve to die that day. And his final 911 no, call will forever remain cemented into internet history as one of the most disturbing real-world examples of a simple weekend drive that shouldn't have ended the way it had. Dude, that's crazy, bro. Rest in peace, dude. That is so sad. Dude, this transition is crazy. Would you, could you, on a train? What does that mean? Thomas? Did Thomas the tank engine come and turn into a homicidal? It's 7.23 a.m. on the morning of September 29th of 2016. Pasacac Valley Line train 1614 departs the Spring Valley Station in New York, heading southbound for the Hoboken Station in New Jersey. One way, the trip takes about an hour by train, and on board that morning were an estimated 250 passengers. The ride itself is mostly okay, with nothing seeming awry. Time begins to pass, and train goers await the day of work ahead of them. Eight forty-five a.m. The train's approaching its destination. Being one of the busiest travel hubs in the region, Hoboken Station was lively as expected. The train approaches the terminal, and where it's typically required to stop, it doesn't. Oh, no. Nah. It maintains its full speed and oh, crashes through the nah. bumper stop at the end of the rail, causing passengers to be thrown throughout the cabin and forced into a manic frenzy with no clue on how to process it. We just kept going and going. Oh, no breaking. Oh, nah, dude. No nothing. Jamie Weatherhead saw Bro. claims. Bro, when I was in college, I took the train every day. Because it was, I went to school downtown. I'm like half an hour, 45 minute drive out of downtown. You know what I'm saying? So I would take the, I'd take the bus to the, to the train, and I'd take the train to school, right? I could not fucking imagine, bro. Like if I was, if I was sitting on the train, I had my headphones in. You know what I'm saying? I'm blasting fucking, blasting some fucking Drake in my ears. You know what I'm saying? In my backpack, and I'm just sitting, vibing, ready to, you know, go home from a long, hard day of schooling, and the train just doesn't stop. And it just keeps going, dude. I don't, I don't even know what the hell I would. I don't even know what the hell I'd be thinking, doing, bro. I can't even. The moment feels like an eternity, at least until gravity does what it does. The train comes. I think to a they halt. have emergency brakes now, though, right? Because when I was on the train, I think they had them. I think they had um. I think they had emergency brakes. Past the rails and up against the terminal. But I'm not sure. And the normally busy, I could be wrong. lively train station is now temporarily declared a disaster area. On this day, 
114 passengers are injured, and one loses their life. Damn, bro. September 29th is now forever associated with the tragedy that should not have happened. A fucking train crash, dude. That's crazy. So what happened? It just didn't... What happened? Like, what do we gonna go? We gonna know why? Did, like, what was it? A, was it a malfunction with the train? Was it some fucking? Was it? Was it some like nine eleven type deal where you know people hijacked it, terrorists or something? Like, what's the what's the story with it? It, it was it just fucking it just crashed and that's all we get, dude. While this event is tragic in and of itself, on the internet and through word of mouth, the mystery surrounding it is merely beginning to take root. So they don't even know. Let's back up. Oh, I thought the story was done. Never mind, I might have I got ahead of myself. My bad. Good morning from the wires of Associated Press and the WKT. It's one day prior, the 28th. A central New York TV station named WKTV was broadcast on the usual 6 p.m. lineup. During a commercial break, however, something peculiar would overtake their station. Let's have a look. What is that, a rocket? Civil authorities have issued a hazardous materials warning for the United States. Effective until September 29th, 2.16 a.m. Would you, could you, on a train, wait for further instru- What? So you're telling me there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a public service announcement saying oh hey by the way we we've issued a hazardous materials warning for the entire country of the united states oh by the way here's a here's a train rhyme wait further instructions what is the, what is that that can't be there's no way that's Civil real authorities have issued a hazardous materials warning for the united states effective until september 29th 2 16 a.m would you could you on a train. What is? There's no way that's real, bro. Not only did they appear to be hacked, but of all things, it referenced a Dr. Seuss quote about a train, and the timing is striking. Immediately after, WKTV puts out numerous statements from their Twitter. If you were watching our 6 p.m. newscast, you saw a hazardous materials warning message. There is no such warning. It was a technical error. And later that night, from their website, if you were watching our newscast around 6.17 p.m. or at 10.38 p.m., you may have seen a hazardous materials warning crawl across your screen. There is no such warning. The message was an automated test which was not intended for public display. This message originated from FEMA as a test and had the national location code in it. Tests should not have that code as it's automatically retransmitted. We've contacted the New York State Broadcasters Association, who administers the emergency alert system Have in New it, York. you're a freak! We're working with FEMA to resolve this. Our apologies for the confusion this may have caused. In total, there wasn't one, but two of these alerts. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find footage of them separately. However, it's safe to assume that they were either the exact same, or very similar. Interestingly, if we pick apart their wording, WKTV is mostly pinning the blame on FEMA, the Government Disaster Relief Program. An interesting claim, but perhaps that's all it was. So, so the later. government, so the Disaster Relief Program is at fault for an ominous message about a train a day before a major train crash. Something ain't right, bro. Somebody ain't telling us something, dude. There's, 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 some, there's something going on here. And the train crash occurs. WKTV releases yet another statement containing an update. 
FEMA replied that they did not send this out. They'll launch a full investigation into how their codes were hacked. WKTB seems to be the only target of this hack. For now, we've disabled the codes in our decoder that trigger this alert. If there's a real national alert, we'll still receive it from the local radio stations we're assigned to monitor. WKTB will cooperate fully with FEMA, providing information about our hardware, software, and internet access, and will provide log files from our devices. This information will be helpful to FEMA to track down the source of this hack. Oddly, around the same time that this was happening, other videos began to crop up, showing strange alerts that had happened in places around the United States. While these are indeed strange, and do hint at the possibility of a system-wide hack, the incident that occurred on WKTV yeah. was the only one of its kind to include this unusual Dr. Seuss quote. Unfortunately though, to this day, the origin and motive of why this happened, or who did it, has remained unsolved. Of all the entries I've covered thus far on disturbing things, this is one of the most bewildering. Understandably, since this occurred, conspiracy theories have cropped up all over the internet, theorizing on the potential of the train operator being complicit and entertaining the idea that the crash was somehow planned by some external party. See, that's what I was thinking. While I personally don't subscribe to these, what I do find highly unusual is the timing, and I don't think I'll ever be able to shake that. Okay, so this is a mystery that has not been solved yet. All right, light-skinned Sherlock Holmes is here to solve the mystery. Here's what happened. Here's what the fuck happened. It's some weirdo, freaky, fucking dumbass, weirdo, virgin, terrorist people. And they hacked into the fucking thing to send out this message. And then the fucking whoever was driving the train fucking crashed the shit. That's what happened. That is what happened. It was, it was, it was, it was pre, it was pre-planned. An audible simulation, Mother Nature's wrath, a nightmarish abduction, a disturbing plea for help, and an eerie broadcast alert. The world can be a depressing, creepy, and disturbing place, and tonight's topic is What is... What is happening? It's an old tape. What's on it? Is it Power Rangers? A bonus item? There's more! The man in the monitor. Excuse me? It's the 23rd of February, 2017. A criminal trespassing incident occurs in Billings Heights, Montana. Case number 17.12420. What is it, trespassing? The local police department takes to Facebook soon after to ask for the public's help in tracking down this mysterious individual that, considering what he'd done, is every parent's worst nightmare. The Billings Police Department is asking for the public to be aware of an incident that took place last week in the Billings Heights. On the above date and time, officers responded to a possible burglary in progress. The female resident reported to officers that she observed a male subject in her infant daughter's bedroom what? on the bigger monitor. The victim said she immediately went to her daughter's bedroom, removed her daughter, and left the residence. When officers arrived, the residence and neighborhood were searched, but the suspect was not located. Dude. The victim said that the baby monitor is synced to her Then what the fuck was the point of you? What the fuck are the cops doing, motherfucker? You dudes committing a crime, you can't even find the motherfucker. The baby monitor Weak ass, useless cops. and took the attached photo of the suspect, which alerted her cell phone. Wait, there's a picture? That photo is this one. Oh, Today. fuck no! Oh my god, he's like climbing in through the window! Oh fuck, dude. This mysterious intruder. Oh no. Nah. Has never been found. Dude, that's fucking crazy. That's fucking crazy. Oh my gosh. The world could be a depressing, and to this, creepy, to this day he hasn't even been found, bro. In disturbing place. And tonight's topics encapsulated that. 
you and I just dove into six disturbing things from around the internet. I hope you all enjoyed this, and if you have any further oh submissions for this series, feel free to submit them to the show's inbox at DTFA Dude, submissions. That's Gmail. crazy. That was fucking crazy. First of all, shout out Next Bow, because that video was fire. You know what I'm saying? That was, that was a very well made, researched, informative video, bro. But dude, I am truly, truly disturbed, bro. The ones, I feel like the worst ones for me, the worst ones were the the car, right? The family in the car and the fucking thing got stuck. Their gas pedal got stuck. That one was awful and terrible. The tornado one was awful and terrifying. And then the one with the, with the, the psycho, the psycho dude, right? He like, he kidnapped a girl. He like used her body to make it look like she was alive, painted fucking Satan shit with her blood. That dude is a psycho. Those are the worst ones for me, bro. Like, yeah, that, that dude in the baby's room, that one, that one is truly disturbing, bro. But those other ones, woo, those are on a whole other level of terror and disturbing, bro. This, this was crazy. This was, this was, this was crazy. I'm gonna have nightmares. I'm gonna have to lock all my windows. The, 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 the dementia CD was kind of sad. I, I, we didn't get to listen to like the whole thing. That was, that one was just sad. But dude, I'm, I'm gonna have to like, I'm gonna have to like hire a uh, armed security guard. Dude, I'm gonna have to equip my dogs with like fucking titanium teeth or some shit, bro. Cause this, this is psychotic. The psychos in this video are on another level, bro. I can't do this.